Pedigree activity page 60, question number one. Now, I wanted to do this one because it is on blood typing, and we know that uh, lots of questions on blood typing. So let's go through this. Let's do our legend really quickly uh, over on the side here. If I have a capital IA, doesn't matter what the other allele is, that's going to be A blood. If I have a capital I with a B, doesn't matter what the other allele is, that's going to be B blood. But these are codominant. So if I have both, and they always show the A first, just first letter of the alphabet, I suppose. Uh, that's going to be AB phenotype. Okay, the only way I can have O blood is if I have two recessive little O alleles and represented by little I's. Okay, that's O. So that is uh, the nomenclature they want you to use. Uh, so make sure that notation is assigned to those alleles. Okay, so a uh, bunch of individuals here. Uh, We'll go through these, but let's just take a look at anybody that is A, B, and O blood. We love those guys because we can fill those guys in immediately, right? So if you have A, B blood, it's because you have both the alleles. If you have O blood, we love that because they're little eyes, right? Same with this individual's right here. So a bunch of those we can fill in right away. Now the other ones gets a little bit more difficult. So let's work our way through this. Now, uh, this individual with the B, we know that they must be IB. Other allele, look at their mom, right? Mom was O blood, all she can contribute in her egg is a little I. So we know he's heterozygous for B blood. Uh, same with this individual's here. Uh, baby or the son was IA because it's A blood, but mom can only donate a little I. Same with this one as well. So we can fill in lots of these here. Now this individual's uh, two, five. Know that they have to be an IA, but take a look at their kid. Now they married in the family, but they did have a kid that had O blood. And because of that, we know that must be a little I. Because both parents must contribute a recessive O allele for them to have a kid with O blood. Okay, now this individual, I believe this is the only one that we can't do. So IA, take a look at this one. Now you, the reason that we know that is because there's two possible ways we can get an A phenotype for that son they had. They could contribute an IA, IA, homozygous for A blood, or heterozygous, IA, and the other one contributes a little I. So for this particular one, that's probably, I believe, is the only one that we can't really determine, unknown phenotype, or genotype. Okay, let's take a look at this individual. Now, it gets a little tricky here. We know individuals 2-1 must have an IA. Now, you might be thinking the same thing. They married in the family. How do we know if they're IA, IA, or if they're heterozygous, IA with a little I? Look at this kid that they had with B blood. If you thought, now, just let's say we thought hypothetically, you thought it was an IAIA. All they could possibly contribute to that B son is an A allele and there's no way you would have a B baby. That would be an AB baby. So we know that that can't be homozygous for IA. Has to be a little I, okay? We know it can't be a B because they do have A blood. So can you see how that works? If you don't, uh, again, uh, give me an email, we can go over it again. But that person must have contributed, or that dad must have contributed a little I here. And of course that kid is B blood, has to be carrying the B allele. Okay, but that's how we know this heterozygous. If it was IA, IA, there's no way they'd have a B baby. Okay, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, we filled out all of the different genotypes. Just wanted to go over that question uh, because I think uh, blood type, well, I know blood type is very important. So I won't bother transferring them down here, but that's essentially how we got all those. Any questions, give me an email. Thanks.